like having the handbrake? Or you prefer the... I, I would take toe brakes, personally. Yeah. Gives you a little bit better uh, differential turning. The differential braking for the turn. Never a good sign when a bird is hovering over there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it said the wind was like 11. Not too bad, right? Yeah, not too bad. Probably a lot for. I think, I think we're going to get some some bumps when we start heading out to the west there, but we'll deal with them, no problem. All right, so. Trim is set. Throttle at idle. Brake currently on. It is on, yeah. Yoke is off. Battery generator on. Eggs both. Flaps at zero. ELT armed. Gas is on. Um, lights are on. Avionics are on. 1200. Alt. Proper channel. GPS is not set. So since we're staying in Racine, uh, we can just hit nearest direct enter enter. So if ever you get lost in here, just hold this clear button down and it'll go back to your original page. Patton traffic yeah. here is 446 Charlie Delta is 9 to the south. We'll be making a left downwind for 2 2, Patton traffic. Uh, direct. Enter, enter. Oh. Oh. One more time. You're good. Yo, you had it. So you, when you get to this page, it's highlighted on oh, Racine, okay. so if you want to so change it, you hit enter once and it goes to activate. It's kind of uh, like, oh, hey, are you sure? Yeah, okay. So that's what it's doing. All right. Uh, that's set. Gauges are all in the green. Yep. Um, got gas. <laughs> got gas. All right, let's do it. All right. What did that guy say he was? Hey, Racine traffic, 9 or 2, 1 kilo, departing runway 3, 2. Westbound, proceed. All right, let's do it. If he done a short final, he would have responded a lot quicker. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're rotating at 41. And what you're going to do is you're going to come back enough, and you can start with it just slightly back like this. Okay. You're just going to rotate and get the nose off, and then you're going to hold that attitude, and then she'll start flying when, when she's ready to go. We are a little heavier today with gas, so our pitch angle is going to be slightly lower. Do I want a little bit of left aileron as well for the wind? Yep. All right, runway's clear. A little. Runway's clear. All right. Off we go. Hand stays on the throttle all the way to the front and all the way to the top. Nice smooth movement all the way up. There you go. Nice small pressures. There you go. All right, 42. Off we go. No flags. Yep, just start pulling back. We're out of here. Racing traffic, Sirius 446 Charlie Delta. Is five to the south. Left down one for two two. Racing traffic. get beat up pretty good. Um, so now, when you're climbing through turbulence or flying through turbulence, try not to overcorrect the airplane too much. So if we get a bounce, if it takes us off a heading we're trying to hold, then you can go ahead and correct it. But like, watch what the plane does if I don't do anything here. See how it just stabilizes itself? Yeah. Now, like here, we're coming off heading. So there you go. Now you'll correct in on it. And it just keeps you from over-controlling. Okay. All right. 1200 left turn to the southwest, please. Then we're gonna climb up to 3000. But now, if you look at the bases of these clouds, you see how they almost have kind of a net, like a concave to the base of them. Yeah. That's a very, very good sign that there's gonna be some turbulence out here. So, okay. uh, as we fly under those clouds, we're gonna get some bumps. All right, there you go. That's good. Breaking traffic here. Departure to the southwest. Receive. And we have you in 
stay jump back. Yeah, okay, so now we can make our little right turn out to the west there. Keep in mind that we have a southwest wind that's going to try to drift us north, so you might have to keep a little crab angle in. Okay. So like 10 or 15 degrees off of west. And then you just reference your GPS here, make sure that we're not wandering into, into the Class C airspace. Uh, so when we get out to the practice area, if you'd like, I can demonstrate uh, an emergency procedure and kind of show you where we want to get to eventually. I don't expect them to be there today. But, uh, and how uh, how low are we actually going to take it then? Uh, until landing is assured. So, it might be 50 feet, might be 20 feet. I mean, I within mean, the margins of safety. We'll be alright. Like today? I mean, we're going to go down to 20 feet? Gotta buzz the farmers, man. <laughs> Alright, we can come a little bit more to the west. You can see the two roads there, right? Yes. Yeah, we just stay on that north road. That'll keep us out of the airspace and out of Sylvania's hair. 3,000, you like? Yeah. So, altitude, power, then trim, if necessary. Feels like she wants to climb, so maybe it's just a little more nose forward trim would be appropriate, but I'm actually surprised at how smooth it is right now. Just as I say that, we're going to get flipped. Did you want to go far enough out to start it at? Sea traffic, Cherokee, on tire 265, we're taxiing to runway 22. Racing. And 6 Charlie Delta is clear, runway 22. Is there ever a problem if someone picks runway 3-2 and then another guy wants 2-2? Can that cause traffic problems? Well, I mean, you just got to communicate with each other and decide, you know, who's where and who's going first, basically. Departure on 25, 2000. Line 25, Milwaukee departure, radar contact, turn left heading 0, 9 or 0. Climb and maintain 1, 3000. It does get a little more complicated when someone's like, like say we're doing touch and goes in a headwind and someone else comes in the pattern and they want to practice crosswinds, then it takes a little bit more timing and talking to each other. And, okay. Um, you know, most people are pretty courteous, They're like where they'll, okay, you know, I'm the one using the stupid runway, so <laughs> you go ahead or, right. um, I know you have a faster airplane. Oh, I so. see, so sometimes you will pick the wrong one on purpose. For yeah, practice if we're gonna practice crosswind, crosswind landings or something like that. And, and then there's people that, I don't know, I mean like, like jets and stuff for example. 
Uh, Johnson's Wax Falcon 900, they're going to use 4 or 2-2 two, two every time. For, right. Even if it's a 90 degree cross one. Because it's longer. Right. Yep. Piper 19265, we're crossing. 1, 5, 1, 4, 3, 2 on Alpha. Now, do you want me down at 4700 while we're just cruising out here like this, or? Yeah, it's up to you. I mean, normal cruise range is between 4,400 and 5,000. Okay. So, I mean, if you want to run it harder, you can. Um, if we're on a cross country or something, just keep in mind your fuel burn is going to be different. At 5,000 RPMs, you're probably burning three quarters of a gallon more. Okay. An hour. So, I mean, hopefully that doesn't make a huge difference, but in some airplanes it does. Like if you're flying the Icarus on a cross country, right. you can only have eight gallons of gas on there. You got to be real conscious about how much gas you're burning. Now this one's got the fancy gauge that shows how many gallons per hour we're burning. So, right. And what are these other numbers here? Uh, so gallons remaining, how much we've used so far, how much time we have on the fuel, which will adjust constantly based on whether you're climbing or descending. Right. Um, how many gallons per nautical, uh, or how many nautical miles you're going to travel per gallon, and then gallons when we get to the next waypoint. Like if we turned around right now and headed back to Racine, we would theor theoretically land with 25.8 gallons. Okay. And then your range. If we kept going straight, we could probably make about 550 miles before it conked out. Wow. Yeah, not too bad. What's the farthest you've gone in this one? Ah, uh, western Wisconsin. Proceed direct to Fonzie, climb via the SID, except maintain 1-3000. Direct Fonzie, climb via the SID, except maintain 1-3000. Frontier flight uh, 131. Uh, it's starting to look a lot greener out here. Yeah. Now, if we were to come across a puffy little cloud like that, are we going to maneuver to go away from that? Yeah, yeah, we would maneuver to go around it. Far cleared, aren't ever on my one five approach. So it's considered a cloud when you can't see through it. You know, past right. three miles. I mean, if it's a wispy, cloud-looking thing, I mean. Theoretically, you can see through it, so you can fly through it. Uh, the main reason that you don't fly into clouds, there's two. One is loss of directional control. I mean, if you're not trained to be in clouds, you know, staring at your instruments and stuff, uh, you can get yourself into a trouble real quick. Life expectancy of a VFR pilot in a cloud is 90 seconds. So, doesn't mean it's for everyone, but right. that's kind of the statistical. Uh, the other thing is the clouds, you know, they're filled with aluminum, so we don't want to... You can't see that aluminum. Are they? Other airplanes, right? Oh. <laughs> I mean, if you can't see, we're seeing a void, right? Uh, um, so like... if we can't see the airplane, we can't avoid it. Uh. And so even when you're an instrument pilot uh, on an instrument flight plan with the with the guys watching you on radar, right. you're still responsible for traffic avoidance because they can't see everything. There might be someone out there that doesn't have a transponder. So. Alright, let's do our clearing turns. Alright, one airplane out over there. Looks like he's heading away from us. Clear to the right. Where's that, over there? Uh, he's back at about uh, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Okay. And he's about 5 miles, so looked like he was heading away. Alright, right turn to the west, please. Alright, so when you're picking your field, we talked a little bit about it. Just remember, the smoother the better. Uh, the darker the field, typically the rougher it's going to be because it's freshly plowed up. Okay. Um, so other things to consider, you want to make sure that there's no power lines or, you know, obstacles.
obstacles in the field that, that you might have a problem dealing yeah, it's with. It's kind of hard to see from up here, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can see those power lines, especially the big high-tension wires and stuff, and you can see those pretty good. So, all right, you want me to demonstrate? Yeah. I have the airplane? You have the airplane. All right, I'm just going to kind of fly around here. You just pull the engine to idle whenever you want to start the emergency procedure. Okay, so now I always give myself two or three seconds of the oh crap factor. Oh, okay, okay. we got a problem here. All right, A, airspeed, 68 knots. I'm going to let that nose come down for 68 knots. B, best place to land. All right, let's see if I can find somewhere that looks good to land. I want to face south today. The green field right over there, let's give that one a shot. It's right down the road here. It's uh, got a farm on the west side of it. So it's, I'm picking a field that's not at our maximum glide range. I know we're going to make that. So, All right, holding 68 knots. Got our field selected. C, checklist. All right. Fuel is on. Bags are on both. Master's on. Everything looks good. I'm going to pull the carb heat on just, just in case we got carb ice. Okay. Make sure that's not the problem. Oh, no, our fuel is empty. Okay, well, I guess we're doing an emergency landing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut the bags off. I'm going to take the key out, and I'm going to put this fuel shutoff valve down. Okay. Generator comes off. Still keeping this ready. E, declare. EC, flip it, 121.5. 7700 in the transponder. Mayday, mayday, mayday. 9 or 2 kilo. Engine failure about a mile and a half to the northwest of Eagle Lake. Two souls on board. Color of the aircraft is white. They'll talk. Okay. All right, so we're done with them. Battery comes off. Well, no, we're going to leave the battery on because we still need flaps, right? Okay. And if he's still talking to you? Uh, you can either ignore him. Well, if you're going down at this point, what are you, you going to say? So. All right, so I got that field made, so I'm going to go flaps to 15 now. I'm on a left base to go into that field there. Okay. So now it's basically going to be kind of a normal landing approach, if you want to call it that. Little bumps. I'm pitching for my normal airspeed of 54. Another notch of flaps. All right, so now looking at the smoke coming off of that farm, I can see that the field that I chose is going to have a 90 degree crosswind, so apparently the winds are a little different out here. All right, little turn here. And I see something flying down there. Uh, uh, yeah, an RC airplane. Oh, that's a hawk. Oh. <laughs> I guess it uh, works. All right, so now I'm just kind of doing a slip. All right, going to make it, so we're out of here. Full power flaps to 15, carb heat is off. Climbing out at 61. altitude, lower the nose, flaps come to zero. Now we're climbing out at VY, 73. Alright, so do you have the airplane? I have the airplane. We're going to climb her back up to 3,000, and off we go. So now the egress portion of the checklist was covered when I shut down everything since we don't pop doors. Um, if you have a little time, a good idea is to try to give a passenger briefing to your passenger of, hey, we're going to be going into this field, we're going to hit hard, I want you to brace yourself, tighten your seatbelt. When the airplane comes to a complete stop, open your door, go to the end of the wing, and I'll meet you 50 feet behind the, the airplane. Okay. If I'm not there, I'd appreciate if you maybe come back and help me out. <laughs> but that's all up to you, whether you're a hero or not. <laughs> Any questions about anything I did there? Uh, no, it's a lot going on, but... Uh... Yeah, I mean, the key is to remain calm and fly the airplane. That's, I mean, remember our order of operations. Aviate, navigate, communicate. Right. Now, is... uh, now, in a real emergency, you would have been probably like 500 feet lower. 
mean, you would have come lower on that base, right? Yeah. Yep. All right, so I mean, I saw that smoke down there, so the wind is actually basically straight out of the west right now. So okay. we'll pick a, the, when you pick a field, uh, let's do a left turn to the north, please. Um, pick one facing west. That's the direction you want to land. Is that rudder feels bouncing all over for me today. Yeah. level off at 3,000. But you saw how I did the ABC checklist, but I, I mean, right. if it's too much for you, fly the airplane and pick your field. That is, those are the only two real requirements okay. for the emergency landing. But if you stop flying the airplane, it doesn't matter anyways. <laughs> well, left turn to the north, please. Um, for today, I'm more interested in your procedures than whether you actually are going to make the field or not. I mean, we'll, okay. when you get more into landings, then I'll definitely expect you to hit the field you're aiming for. Um, but for now, it's more, you know, choosing the correct field and, you know, not getting too far away from it and all that stuff. All right. Oh, no. Okay. Pitching for 68. And looking for a field into the wind, which is off turn to the west. Okay. And oh man, there's a really good green field right in front of us up there. Yeah, is that too close though? No, not necessarily. All right. Um, I mean, we have things that we can do: S turns, slips, things like that. All right, I'm gonna head back out that way. Come into that field. Just as long as you don't get so far away that you can't make it back. That's the key. And next uh, checklist: gas is on, mags are both. Uh, oh no, our fuel's empty. Fuel's empty. Um, so that means it's not gonna restart. Not gonna restart. So I'm gonna declare an emergency. Uh, 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 which button is it? This one? Yep, you got it. Oh, okay. Then you just have to flip it over. Oh, flip it over, okay. I'm gonna flip it back so we don't accidentally transmit on it. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Enter to one kilo. Uh, going down in a field. Two miles west of Eagle Lake. Uh, two souls on board. And they would ask you for that, and then he'd be like, oh, what color is your aircraft? White. <laughs> like every other aircraft on the planet. Yeah. Yep, so at this point, you can do some S-turns and kind of help dump altitude. We can do flaps. Do one notch of flaps here. Sure. So you can see we're still doing good. Just make sure you keep that field in sight. I'd actually come a little bit more to the left here. Okay. And then do one more right turn onto a base, and then a left turn into final. to the second flap here, I'm under 60. Okay. Now with 30 degrees of flaps, you can comfortably fly the airplane at 48 knots. But I wouldn't go a whole lot slower than that. And you can see we're going to have quite a bit more of a descent rate. And at this point, I want to try to hold 54. Yep, like right now, I'd basically take an angle right at that field, because right. we're coming down pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, so at this point, you'd be holding, you'd I, want about... I never did the car. There you go, yep. 
Uh, so at this point, you'd want to make sure that you're right around 48 knots or so. I mean, that's kind of a good speed. And so we do full flaps because we want to touch as, as slow as possible. Right. They might need one more small little S turn, just as long as it's not too, too crazy. A little slip. You can see how that just drops us like a rock. Right. Alright, so we'd make it. So, full power. Gonna pitch up. Yep, there you go. Flaps to 15. Power heat off. Climbing at 61 knots. That's basically our go-around procedure with full flaps as well. Right. Nice job. I mean, you know, you kept your eye on your field, you kept your speed under control, got the Mayday call in. Good. How high do you go then until you go up the, the uh, last, or bring the flaps back down? Uh, usually 300 feet above ground. So we're, we're safe now, so. Uh, there you go. Charlie Tango is turning client, or base for 2-2. Uh, Alright, any questions about... I was a little off on the... Uh, we were actually north of the lake. I think I said west of the lake. But yeah. Someone will see you going down, apparently, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, you hope so. Racing traffic zero, Charlie. And that's something to actually consider. I mean, if you see a field with a farmer in it, I mean, don't don't land where you might cause him harm. But right. hey, land in the same field, he's probably going to see you and be there to help you out. Um, especially in winter, you know, these fields from up here don't look that big. Well, if I plop you down in the middle of that field, there, it's it's a bit of a walk to get to the road. Right. Um, you know, middle of winter with a foot of snow on the ground break your leg. I mean, you know, so that'd be another thing to consider, trying to land some close to some kind of civilization, be it a house, a tractor, you know, um, where someone might be able to render you some assistance. Yeah, so we'll go up to 3,000 uh, and we'll do it again. Yeah, we can do a little left turn to the south, and in a second we'll make another left turn to the east. Nice little clearing turn here. There's an airplane straight above us up there. Oh yeah. Just going away, no factor. After each maneuver, I'll be expected to do a clearing turn. Yes. Now, if you offer to do one and the examiner says, nah, don't worry about it, then you don't have to ask him anymore, but... Alright, so now in a situation where you have some sort of, you know, carburetor issue with carburetor ice, for example, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to feel the engine start to run rough. Then you're going to get a loss of RPM going to drop a little and you'd be like, okay, that's weird. I mean, at this point, the first thing you'd do is put carb heat on. Right. Cool. And that'll slowly lose RPM and then gain back up. Yes. Well, you don't really know what will happen, but... Yeah, I mean, it'll at least that. hold it stable and bring it back to, you know, your cruise setting minus 200, maybe, right. RPM. All right, uh, left turn uh, to the east, please. A situation like fuel exhaustion or fuel of starvation, uh, the engine is just going to pretty much quit. Um, 
With fuel starvation, typically that would be like a clogged fuel vent or something like that. And it may not quit instantly, but you're going to definitely know there's a problem before it quits. Right. Uh, with fuel exhaustion, if you just plain run it out of gas, it's just going to basically... Oh no, all of a sudden it's dead. Which is apparently what happened now. Okay. Turning to the west. Pitching for 68. And looking for a field. Uh, kind of like that green field over there. Okay, let's see if we can make it. Actually, I'm going for that big, big one over there. Okay, let's see if we can make it. So that one would be a little bit on the maximum extent of the glide range. I think we'll make it, but... Okay. I mean, glide right at it. <laughs> and hold your speed. All right. So we got A and B done. Good to go. Oh, yeah. Uh, flip this over. Mayday, mayday, mayday. 921 kilo. Uh, engine out. Going down in a field. South of uh, Eagle Lake. About a mile, about three miles. Okay. And then you might want to do 7700 zero, zero in there. Just kind of stimulate it. Seven seven zero zero. Yep, zero zero. And then do you have to hit enter or something? Nope, it just automatically goes in. Ooh, a little wind get gave us a little help there. I think we're gonna make it now. And now I'm kinda I have some more airspeed. Do I wanna be at sixty eight no matter what? That's gonna give me my farthest glide. Yep, sixty eight'll give you your best glide. Even though it feels like seventy would be better. <laughs> Yeah. For a hundred. Ah. <laughs> uh, would I want to do a right base on, uh, in this situation, or? Uh, yeah, I would probably do that. All right, we got, we've declared. Now we're ready for egress, so we're going to start shutting stuff off. And going to shut the uh, gas off. Uh, tell the passengers as soon as we land. Keep your seatbelts uh, on as soon as we land. Get out quick and run. Yep, meet me 50 feet behind the airplane. It's kind of a rally point, so we know everyone's accounted for. Fuel off and uh, flaps in. Yep, so with 15 degrees of flaps, it's going to give us some float. Might want to go straight to 30 since we're basically over the field now. And you might end up doing a little bit of a shallow S turn. We are just hanging up here. That seems like we're coming down. And you can see the advantage right away of picking a nice long field. Yeah. I mean, I would take, if this was a black field, I would take a long black field over a short green one, you know. I mean, more room for error, really. Okay, we got this made. Let's go ahead and go around. So, full power. Flaps to 15, carb heat off, climbing at 61. Got a tower right over there, we'll be clear of that. We'll just hold this heading and climb straight out. Now will this give me a little beep if we were under the tower? You can see the red there? Yeah. So technically, I mean we're over it now, right. but we're within 100 feet of it. Okay. If it was, if it was like, hey, you're gonna hit that, it would be an, a red X. I see. The deer out in that field. There we go. All right, let's do a left turn to the east, please. Left turn to the east. Good job. Yeah, you're doing well with these. We'll do one more and then we'll start wandering home. We'll try a few landings. And this is something that we're going to hit every time we come out to the practice area. We're going to do at okay. least one emergency procedure. Okay. Do the, do the farmers ever get pissed? I've never gotten a call. <laughs> In, in 
louder airplanes, I think I've scared them a few times, but yeah. I think they like it. Yeah. All right, we do a left turn to the north, please. Traffic Falcon 82 and Echo is departing the area to the southwest. There to fly. Yeah, it turned out to be pretty good. It was nasty this morning. wander back up to Eagle Lake over here. Alright. Uh, I was going to say I'm kind of cheating looking for a field, but that's probably a good thing to do while you're flying. Exactly. I mean, it's a good habit to get into when you're on a cross-country flight especially. I mean, every few minutes, I'm just, you know, I'm sightseeing a little bit out there, but at the same time, you're thinking about, okay, where's the wind coming from? And if my engine were to quit in the next couple of minutes, where would I go? Uh, so, always a good thing to have in the back of your mind. I mean, you shouldn't think about it to the point where it's scaring you or anything, but, I mean, the likelihood of an engine failure is not high, but right. it, it happens, you know, and if you're not prepared for it, you can be... Uh, Scrambling, and that's what we'll talk about it with cross countries too. But altitude is your friend. I mean, when you're flying across country to Dubuque, Iowa, or right. something like that, I mean, why not go to five or six thousand feet? You worry more about uh, wake turbulence from bigger planes once you get up there. Or? No, no. I mean, those the big planes are up in the you know twenty, thirty, forty thousand foot range. So we're and would you go with flight following, too, on that? Definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, with the sport pilot training, I don't always incorporate flight following right away because we really only do one cross-country. Right. And, uh, you know, if you're not trained in control towers, it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. Right. Um, and the control tower training is completely optional. So if you want that, it's probably two hours of time. We yeah. go down to Kenosha, spend a little time down there. I would say I definitely would want that. Yeah, and, and some people choose to do that when they're done. They get your certificate and then, hey, I want to get checked out on control towers. It's just an endorsement in your logbook, so. Okay. Ah, oh, no. All right, I'm uh, pitching for 68. So am I, I want to gain, well, you don't really sure, gain yeah, much I mean, just, altitude. Or at least hold altitude, I mean, yeah, whatever you got to do. Ooh, airplane right down there. Where? Uh, oh, yeah, low. Probably at a thousand HL. All right, turning. Go west, looking for a field. A bunch of short fields that I don't like. Uh. In a lot of places that aren't as generous as here, you might have to pick a field you're not particularly thrilled about. Yeah. It's a nice green one right off my right side. So there's another thing. Ask your pastor, hey, you see anything over your side that looks smooth? Yeah. All right, I think I can do a complete circuit. 
Okay. Like that one actually. Sure. Okay, so got my field. Um, mayday, 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 nine or two on kilo. Going down, no engine, into a field uh, two miles north of Eagle Lake with two passengers. Oops. Aircraft down there, looks like he's doing test turns or turns around a point. Okay, so we're going to bug out of this area. Laps are zero, carb heats off, we're climbing. You have the airplane? Uh, we'll go back up to 3,000. You can just kind of wander to the uh, northwest over there. We'll give him a little room. All right, I have the airplane. All right, all yours. Yeah, he must be doing turns around a point over there. Okay. All right, left turn to the west, please. wind right now up here. Whoa, 32? Yeah. See if we can find him again. Yep, there's around a point on that intersection down there. Right there? Yep. I don't see him. I haven't been sighted. We'll, we'll be alright. We'll just wander out here just a little bit. And our way home we'll uh We'll go a little higher. I also have an airplane at about uh, 10 o'clock, level on the horizon, a little below the horizon now. Now everyone's getting off work. They're coming flying now. Good for them. And I do not have them in sight. <laughs> All right. Looking for traffic. Yep. We'll do a little left turn to the south. Clear left. All right, you see him down there? He's, you see that intersection? Yeah. Yeah, he's right, I don't know, if you look straight up over the intersection, he's just above it. About to go into a left turn. Wow, he's really low. Yeah, yep. Uh, this guy, where'd he go? Traffic, Navy on 8645 Hotel, five miles east northeast, inbound for a two niner. There we go, there he is, right over there. So he's inbound to Burlington, so he won't be a factor. We just gotta watch out for this guy down here. I guess we'll go to the south side of Eagle Lake and do, a, do one more. You can really see when he does those turns how it really exposes his airplane. It makes him a lot easier to see. That's why when we do our clearing turns, we want to do that 30 degree bank so that other people can see us. Right. And same within the pattern, you know, having a, a 20 to 30 degree bank will expose a lot more surface area. In case someone's coming in with no radio or just doesn't like using the radio or whatever. Is the wind blowing us that way, kind of, we're kind of... Yeah, I mean, we're kind of, I mean, if we kept this heading, we'd end up over there somewhere. Right. So, like, if you're trying to hold a course, like, say we had a, a GPS line to O'Hare there. Yeah. Um, you'd want to be a little bit right of that line. Your right. nose point, and you, you're almost flying sideways. That's what I feel like we're kind of going right down this road, but yet we're pointed. Exactly, yeah. And then we'll start, we'll really get into crab angles a lot more. Number one, when we're in the pattern. Yeah. And number two, when we're on a cross country flight, you got to hold a heading. And so we calculate our heading and all that fun stuff uh, before we leave for the cross country based on the current winds.
Niner 2 1 Kilo is 8 miles to the east, southeast, maneuvering 3,000 feet and below Burlington. I see my favorite field again. There you go. Fly out here enough, you'll start <laughs> having favorite fields. That one and the one with the lone tree we used are my two favorites. All right, man. Fuel is on. We have fuel. Uh, mags are both. So I guess we blew a cylinder. Oh, uh, yeah. Got oil all over the windscreen. Yeah, what do you do with that? <laughs> do what you can do. Alright. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Niner 21 Kilo. Going down. Traffic, maybe on 8645 Hotel. We are north of the field, entering the 45 for 2 Niner Burlington. The Navy on. Love those airplanes. South of. Uh, we're west of Eagle Lake. Yeah, we're about three miles south of Eagle Lake, or about a mile north of Bonn. And two passengers. Oh, Roger that, 9 or 2 one kilo, we have your emergency. Uh, what color is your aircraft? Aircraft is white. Okay, roger that, we're looking for a white aircraft with two passengers. Uh -huh. and they start talking to you too much, you, you turn them off. You got your emergency in, you got your squawk at 7700, and should have a pretty decent idea of where we are. And at this point, I suppose I would turn off the uh, fuel and the battery. Sounds good. And tell my passenger, all right, buckle up. Burlington traffic, maybe on 8645 Hotel. Left downwind, a right down. Downwind for 2 Niner, Burlington. See if those deer are still in this field. to come straight in yet or yeah I mean I don't want to get you sick but I would do something kind of kind of like this yeah I'm just doing kind of gentle s turns yeah I mean it's a nice long field but we are not coming down very fast but once we're over this field that was a gust of wind got us. Tell me if you're getting nauseous. Oh, I think those are the deer straight ahead down there. See those three little dots? Yeah. Burlington Trap, Navy on a six four five hotel, final short final for two nine or Burlington. Either deer or dinosaurs. I don't know what those are. Wolves maybe. Turkeys maybe. Those things are huge. Feeling alright? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I can throw some air your way. That's good. I'm fine. Okay. Alright, safe altitude. Nothing in front of us. Alright, your airplane. My airplane. Alright, let's go up to uh, 2500. We'll do a left turn and direct to Racine. 2500, left turn, direct to Racine. So now we already have Racine loaded on the GPS, so you can just hit direct, enter, enter, and that will bring us back in. In our next couple flights, we'll start talking about, you know, programming the GPS. All right. So there's
Here's your line home. It's 180 degrees behind us. Yeah, so I, I'm wary about showing you those S-turns like that for a couple of reasons. Number one is, you know, if you do them wrong, you could be in big trouble very quickly if you're too right. low to the ground. Right. Uh, and number two, I don't, I don't want to get you sick, but it's important for you, I think, to see that. That you understand your options when you don't Traffic have many. Six four five hotel clear of two nine acting back. Now you can see our line here takes us right over Sylvania, so what we might want to do is go straight up to Eagle Lake and then hit direct enter, enter again and get a new line so that we're not uh, okay. messing with the parachutes if they are already. Burlington traffic, Navy on crossing 19, the 29 or Burlington. I haven't seen them jumping very much this year so far. An airplane at uh, 2 o'clock, level, keep him inside, looks like he's below us now. Burlington traffic center, 21 Kilo is 8 miles to the east-southeast northbound to Eagle Lake at 2,700, climbing 3,000, uh, Burlington. I see him. What airplane is that? Weird looking. Oh, it's a V-tail bonanza. Alright, 3,000 feet, we can level off. North. Flying all over flying the field. Alright, so we know. The 45. We know that 172 is up here goofing around somewhere, so we'll really keep a sharp eye. Traffic, Navy on 8645 Hotel, departing runway 29er to the east to Burlington. They're heading east a little bit now? Yeah, sounds good. So I'd probably come up a little further here. Okay. Tune in, uh, let's tune in Sylvania. See if they're, they're talking at all. Yeah, 120 knot ground speed, that's not so bad. Traffic 921 Kilo is three and a half miles to the west, northeast bound 3300 Sylvania. What a 
nowhere out here. But what I'm doing there is I'm basically fishing, I'm trying to see if I get a response out of them. Okay. All traffic says Skyhawk 6576 hotels entering a midfield uh, left downwind runway 27 at call. Yeah. Uh, Galt, right across the border in Illinois over there. Okay. It's a fun little airport. It's kind of like Sylvania. A little nicer runway. No interstate. <laughs> That's one of the places I do cross countries to in the Icarus. Okay. Call traffic Skyhawk 6576 Hotel, left base 27 Golf. Canadian traffic, Diamond 358 Delta Charlie, 7 miles to the west, entering left downwind runway 26 left, Sylvania traffic. And Sylvania traffic, 9 or 2, 1 kilo is uh, about 2 miles to the northwest, eastbound at uh, 3,000 feet, Sylvania. So he's coming in right now, huh? Skylane, or Skyhawk 656. Yeah, so he's he's entering a left downwind to two six over there, so he should be on the south side of the airport right now. I didn't hear how far he said he was out. I thought he was a couple miles out. So we'll, we'll be clear of him, no yeah. problem. All right, I'm gonna switch over to Racine's frequency and give them a call. Racine traffic nine or two on kilo, seven miles southwest, inbound for runway two two. Racine. I think we'll try two two. We'll take a look at the windsock when we get in the pattern. And so what we can do here, you know, since our recommended entry is a downwind entry, we can just kind of stay south over here until we set up an angle to 2-2. Two -two. So 2-2, two -two, their approach path comes that way, so we're going to be landing out okay. this way. So we'll uh, come to the right a little bit here, now that we're clear of Sylvania. And you want to you want to keep a three mile circle around them just to make sure we're not interfering with people arriving or departing. And so this is the approach path for runway four. Now it's pretty routine that people shoot practice approaches even if it's a tailwind. Um, so once we get past that, we can start our descent. Okay. Because we don't want to descend into the final approach path of someone that's on an ILS. Airport, this is here, 323 Foxtrot Tango, 6 to the west, uh, landing 32, Racine. Hey, do you guys have a current wind speed and direction? For Racine. 323 Foxtrot Tango is uh, 5 and a half, inbound for the west, and a left down on a 32, and uh, we're starting to slow from uh, ground speed of 160. Okay, um, yeah, we don't have a VOR on our airplane. I'm just wondering if you had the current wind speed and direction. Uh, we'll have to check. Five nine minutes to go, wind 28011, gust 2-0. Okay, roger that, thank you. 280 at 11, gusting to 20. Uh, right.
right, so yeah, I guess 3-2 would be our runway. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change our plan. We're going to come up the lake shore and uh, enter an upwind for 3-2. Hey, we're seeing traffic, 921 Kilo is three miles south of the airport. We're going to be uh, northbound over the lake shore and uh, circling around for a downwind entry to 3-2. We're seeing. Yeah, we're basically okay. going to enter an upwind, and we can come down to like 2,200 in the upwind. That's 500 feet above pattern altitude. Um, then we're, again, we're not interfering with anyone. We're not technically in the pattern yet. And will he be landed by then? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's in a Cirrus. He'll be sipping coffee by the time we touch the ground. <laughs> we go over the shore. We're seeing traffic 9 or 2 one kilo, three and a half miles to the southeast. Northbound over the lake shore, 3,000 feet. We're seeing. We're seeing traffic uh, 323 Foxtrot Tango at 2,000 feet entering the uh, downwind for 32. We're seeing. How many Cirruses they got over there? Uh, the, the Cirrus guy is in town tonight for a demo. Oh, so he's, okay. they're having like a meeting at the EAA building. That's a different one than the one we saw the last time. I think they brought two. Yeah. That'd be pretty fun to fly a Cirrus. They're cool airplanes. I just don't have the cash to buy one. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, I don't know if I ever will. Forty dollars at a time. <laughs> I think a brand new one is... Tango, base for 32, The brand new one is upwards of 800 grand, so... Get a used one, you can probably find a used one for 150 at the lowest. Maybe SR20 or something. You used to be able to get a pilot with it, right? What do you mean? I think you, if you bought a new one, you could get a pilot for a year. Really? It comes with it, yep. Interesting. It was one of their options. I think they had a training program, but... We're seeing traffic, 323 three, Foxtrot, Tango, final, 32, we're seeing. I should be seeing him, right? Uh, he's, uh, lost in the traffic down there. I got him. He's kind of hard to see. He's hiding down there. We're, we're good. Go ahead and turn your upwind there. And we'll come down to 2200. We're seeing traffic, 9 or 2 on Kilo is uh, an upwind, runway 32, uh, 2,700 descending. And Sears in sight, no factor. They'll be coming down quick here. Pattern altitude, or yeah, we can probably take a little more throttle out. We're just going to hold off at 2200, and then when we turn crosswind, we'll start coming down the rest of the way. So now, if he hadn't been coming inbound when we realized that, oh, I mean, he's the reason we're using 32, but right, um, we would have basically just entered a downwind on a 45 degree angle, and kind of a perfect entry okay. coming from the west. Alright, where is he? He's on the runway. Yep, yep, there he is. So he's coming to a full stop, so we don't have to worry about him doing a touch and go or a go around, so we'll be clear. Now we can clear it down to uh, 1,700. And over the end of the runway, we'll make a crosswind turn and enter the pattern. So 11 gusting to 20, we have a 9 knot gust spread. So we're going to add five knots to our final approach speed. Yeah, Foxtrot Tango, Racine. Okay. Foxtrot Tango, this is uh, uh, clearly active. Yes, sir. Are you going to need any fuel tonight? Yes, we do need fuel. Where are you at? Uh, just park over there by uh, the rest of them, and we'll send a truck over your way. Roger, uh, 323 Foxtrot Tango. Watch your rudder a little bit, a little left. There you go. Yeah, we're 
Emergency traffic 92 on Kilo is crosswind to runway 32, uh, 1900, descending to 1600. We're seeing. Alright, we'll hold 1600. And we can go ahead and start our downwind turn. Racine traffic 921 kilo downwind 32. Racine. That might leave a little power in here just to help us hold our altitude. We'll level off right here. We want to keep a little crab angle to the right because that wind is going to try to blow us in towards the runway. Get the flaps in. Uh, carb heat. Uh, below 80, flaps. I might have to take just a little power out. Alright. We're going to land on the second runway stripe there, so right about now we can go ahead and take our power to idle. And we're looking for 59 knots. That's where our final approach speed is going to be because of the gusts. Really trying to drift this in. Alright, nice loose grip on the controls, so make sure you're not over controlling the airplane. Into the base. There we go. We're seeing traffic 9 or 2 on kilo, base. 3 2, we're seeing. Now, with this extra speed coming in, um, do that in case the gust stops. So if it's 20 and all of a sudden the gust stops and goes to 11, you know, we just lost 9 knots of air speed right, right there. Right into the final? Or Yep, the whole time. So, just helping you out a little there. Racine traffic 2 1 kilo final 3 2 Racine. I think we'll just do one. I mean, it's pretty blustery out here. So. Okay. Alright, so 59 knots is the speed we're looking for. I'm just kind of helping you. Are so we nice. going to leave just one notch? Yep, left. flaps at 15. If you ever find yourself in a jam where there's a lot of wind out here, coming with zero flaps, you'll have more control effect. Of okay. Alright, so now I'm going to hold a little power in just to keep, keep my altitude. We're coming down pretty quick. You see, I have a nice loose grip on the controls. You'll probably feel that gust die out on us. <laughs> no problem. That was simple. Nice set down. Hey, we're seeing traffic 9 or 20 kilo down and clear all runways. We're seeing Alpha to the south ramp. Alright, let's go ahead and do our after landing checklist. Bottle, idle. Brake says required. Carb heat off. Landing light off. Sounds good. Labs retract. All right, parking brake is set currently, so um, off we go to the barn. Yeah, good job today. I could tell that you'd been reading those emergency procedures. As you get more comfortable with landing, I mean, you actually did a really good job getting to the field and stuff. Um, but it'll, it'll right be here. Ah, uh, nope, we're going oh, straight. straight. Yeah. Unless you want to go see the Cirruses. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Hey, you can just drive over there, too. Do they want to show them off? They're trying to sell them. <laughs> it's the, the Cirrus rep. Tell them you think you might want to buy a Cirrus, he might take you for a ride. <laughs> want to go over there? I got another guy coming in in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, I've done that. It was fun. The Cirrus is it's a cool airplane to fly. It's got kind of like a spring-loaded side stick, and it, it feels like a... It kind of feels like a yoke. Okay. And, uh, but, I don't know, it's just, it's really cool. 
when you look at it, you're like, how would that work? And then when you fly it, it's like, and this is easy. Yeah, it's up here. Yeah, yeah it's kind of on your side here. Three five to the west inbound. We'll stop for three two. drive over there around the outside yeah just uh take a right at the stoplights uh stay right you'll come past the end of the runway here and then it'll be your second right it's the eaa building inside the yeah the fence will be open grounds. yeah the fence will be open so you just i mean there's a building with a parking lot but i mean i go outside and take the roads around yeah yep you have a handheld, you might be able to just cross the runway. I don't know if I would recommend doing that, but. Red Avalanche. Crossing. Hey. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs>